Can you tell me a little bit about yourself as an artist? Yeah, um, I suppose um, like lots of people, we all start when we're very young, don't we? And we're encouraged to, to paint and draw and have fun. Um, and um, you know, like, like other children, that was, that was what I enjoyed doing. I then had a bit of a kind of stop because I remember a teacher um, being very critical of something I'd, I'd drawn when I was seven. And that kind of made me think, oh, well, that's it that's not what I'm going to be any good at, so I'll, I'll stop doing that. So I, I didn't, you know, I kind of halted that really until I got to secondary school and was very much encouraged then by a, a very good teacher. Um, went on to do a fine art degree. Um, and since then I've, I've not stopped painting, doing graphics, set design, theatre design, um, as well as actually working as an HR consultant and director for, for many years as well. So I've had kind of two bits to my career. So I've had the creative stuff and the kind of office stuff at the same time. Um, I've got more time now and I do a, a lot more painting, drawing, graphic design and so on. How did you get into the wild in art and the trails that you've got? Or is this the first one that you've done? No, no, I've, um, I think it's six years ago. Um, it was just after I'd been made redundant, actually, so I had a bit more time um, and I was keen to, keen to do more. Um, and they announced the, um, that there was going to be a trail in Brighton, where I live, uh, which was for the local hospice. Um, and I just thought, oh, I'll have a go, you know, I won't, I won't get anywhere. And it was Snow Dogs was the theme, it's a wild and art trail. Um, and I was really lucky. I had two of my designs chosen. So I finished up with two snow dogs in the living room. Um, not really sure what, what I was doing because they're enormous where I'd been used to. Most of my work is two dimensional paintings. Um, so it was a bit, I was a bit nerve, it was a bit nerve wracking to start with. Um, but since then I've done 12 of the Wild in Art sculptures and, and each one's been a very different experience. It's been lovely working with Wild in Art, with the sponsors, with the, uh, with the charities and the organisations that, that kind of benefit from the Wild and Art Trail. So it's, it's, been, it's been really good for me. Does it bring a different aspect when you're painting on an object or, and as you say, creating these personalities? It, it does because you you start off you you the way that you enter your designs it's it's on a piece of A4 paper. I get my crayons out and I kind of you know I do I, I look at where the sculpture is going to be and I, I I always have kind of story behind the the, the kind of um, the design that I create. Uh, which is associated with the place it's going to be and so on. Um, and, and then you send it off and you think, oh, you know, I won't, I won't get anywhere. But then when you do get your designs accepted, the whole process of moving it from that bit of A4 paper onto, in the case of the ram, a very big, big creature is, is um, well, it throws up all sorts of issues and, and what worked on paper doesn't always work when you get the, get the three-dimensional creature. Um, but that's part of the process and you kind of, you know, there's all these decisions you have to make and, and kind of think through how you're going to resolve them. Um, so that's, yeah, it's good. So, um, Ramesses, tell us about how Ramesses was born and how that came about and your inspiration for it. Uh, well, I, as I say, I like to, I like to have a story about the, the, the designs that I do. I don't just do a design because I like a design. I look at where the, where the creature or the figure is going to be. Um, so I, I looked at Derby, I looked at, you know, famous people that lived in Derby, I looked at, um, uh, particularly at what was in the museum and gallery because they were um, hosting the hosting the trail um, and I found out that there was a, a very prized uh, pair of mummies in the in, in, in the museum uh, so that got me thinking about Egyptian figures and characters um, and then obviously Ramesses, the name, fitted rather well with, with the creature. Um, I, I like the idea of the kind of Egyptian patterns and the kind of symbolism. Um, it's such a big, such a big statue that I wanted a design that was full of interest and, and covered the whole, um, the whole sculpture. Um, so yes, yeah, so looking at um, Egyptian themes, colours, um, patterns, um, it's um, it, it's a very curvy creature, so the idea of sort of curving lines with kind of repeating patterns and those glorious, rich, rich blues and golds, and um, I thought it would be it would be a nice thing to have in a street. Yes. <laughs> so the link with Derby, the link with colour and design, um, and something that told a bit of a story because Ramesses was quite a character as well. The pharaoh, he was. 
um, yeah, a great ruler, 66 years. He had something like 200 wives and 150 children. So quite a colorful, colorful character to have on the streets of, of Derby. You said that there's sometimes there were challenges that you hadn't anticipated from, from your first design to when it's, when you're actually painting on, on the creature. Yeah, the, um, the 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 sculpture. You look, you you would look at it and think that's symmetrical, but actually it isn't symmetrical at all. It's got one hoof up and one. Obviously, it's based on the lovely sculpture that's in in the centre of Derby. Um, its its bum is bigger on one side than the other. So there's all those sort of challenges that you're you're dealing with um, as you go along. Even the even the curly horns aren't actually symmetrical. Um, so you're kind of working all that out. I knew that he was a grand Gramercy's. You know, the original Gramercy's the Great was very grand. So needed a lot of gold. Um, so I had some very special, very expensive gold paint because I wanted it to really sort of zing out. He had to be a kind of noble creature. Um, so that was, yeah, some of the things I was thinking about. It's great fun. And, and when the sun shines on him, it's just beautiful, isn't it? I was very lucky when I visited and, and met um, your, your colleagues in, in Block Creative. Um, the sun had just come out after a very rainy day and it really did just kind of sing from the corner of that street. I could see it you know, as I was walking towards it, which was, which was lovely. What would you like people to take away from the trail, as, or as they, particularly as they meet Ramesses, but some of the other designs as well? I, I mean, it's, I, I met a couple as we were doing the trail ourselves and, and they said, um, you know, this is great. So we've lived in Derby all our lives and we've we've walked around today and we've been to places that we didn't know existed. Um, so I think that's, and the other trails I've been involved with, that's what people say, that it, it kind of encourages people to look differently at, at their city. Um, a lot of the Rams have got Derby specific scenes or themes. Um, and so that, that's really good. The, the app actually helps people discover more as well, that, um, that, that if they open their app, they can find out little things about Derby and about, um, about the inspiration behind the, uh, the different rams. Um, I hope people will visit the museum. There's the lovely little rams in, in the museum. So that's really worth seeing because they're absolutely great, those, those little ones. They're really little gems of color and, and design. Um, so yeah, lots, lots to discover, lots to see. They'll find out about businesses in Derby as well that they might not have known were, were based in Derby. Um, so, you know, it's good for, good for everyone. Um, you were talking there about the, uh, the creative process um, and that you know, a lot of the time you're perhaps working in 2D in a studio. Where do you actually paint and create these, these creatures? Because some of them are pretty big. I think the Rams, the Ramesses was the, is probably the biggest I've had. There was a very large bee that I did for Manchester. That was pretty huge. I've got a very understanding partner and my where I normally paint is, is here, which is the top floor of, of a house. Um, and I, they can't, they, I can't get them upstairs. I can't, some, and, and with Ramesses, I couldn't even get him through the garden gate. Um, so often I'll do them in the living room so we'll be sitting there watching the telly and there'll be a hare and a bee and a you know lighthouse in there. Um, but for Ramesses, I, I had to find somewhere else. So I, it, was, it was a bit of a struggle to find somewhere big enough, but um, it was during lockdown that I did the painting. Um, and I was lucky enough to uh, persuade a theatre company to let me use their workshop um, in exchange for doing a bit of set painting. <laughs> um, so, and that was perfect because they, they obviously weren't putting on shows. The workshop was sitting being unused um, and um, so I was able to wheel him in there and, and get on with him there which was great. A large part of the tour is about participation and and inspiration and you mentioned there about the the, the little rams that we've seen the mini rams that uh, children local school children have been um, designing. Um, what would you say to perhaps budding artists of, of you know old and young um, about what they should be in a sort of tips or what they should be thinking about how they should be um, perhaps approaching their art just just do it i think <laughs> don't be don't be put off like i was when i was seven um and there's you don't you don't need any special equipment i do my designs with i've got a box a box of crayons here and that's how i start i just do just just draw and doodle choose colors that i like um I, and, and just do it, do it lots, um, and and yeah, just enjoy it, I guess, and keep doing it. I think so often we 
stop drawing, don't we? We do lots of it when we're little, and then some, somewhere along the line, we just stop doing it. And then we think, I'm not very good at it, I'm not gonna do it. So just keep doing it. And it's great fun, whatever age you are, um, and you get, get a lot out of it. Um, you were talking there about uh, the different communities coming together um, for the tour, but also the communities coming together again for the auction, because um, these tours really do have a life beyond that sort of the summer or the, the summer of, 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 of seeing the rams in the city. Um, can you tell us a little bit about, about your experience with, with the auctions and, and where some of your wonderful creations have, have ended up? Yeah, the auctions, the auctions are a little bit nerve-wracking, especially if you've, if you've got something that's being auctioned. Um, but they, they are great fun, and, and Derby's got, um, it's, it's a Charles Hansen doing the, um, doing the auction. It's absolutely great, you know, to have a professional auctioneer doing it, because they make it a real event, you know, it's a fantastic thing to attend, and, and, uh, and they're really good at kind of, you know, getting the enthusiasm going and so on. Um, the, um, the, and they raise a lot of money as well, which is, you know, a necessary part of, um, of actually holding holding the trail um, so um, you don't always know as an artist you don't always know where your creature or statue has gone but I have I am lucky enough to know where a few of mine have gone um, and people have kept in touch <laughs> and I get photographs occasionally um, uh, there was a snail that I did um, for a Brighton trail and, and it, the, the family that, that bought it they send me regularly photographs of, of this snail um, but yeah the money is the, the, the I mean I've had I think on average the ones I've done have sold for seven or eight thousand pounds each um, the B in Manchester was sixteen thousand, which was which was a great result for that. Um, but they're great, you know. They're a unique piece of art, and for Derby, the Rams are so essentially Derby. I can't imagine any other city doing them, to be honest, because they're just so much part of uh, part of Derby's history. So it's the chance to have something unique, and they, you know, they go outside. Um, they'll be long lasting, um, and I think the auction will be great fun. Um, and just well, perhaps one sort of final thought about about uh, Ramesses as we as we're coming to the end of the tour quite soon, um, and you move on to the next one. Do you do you still think about the other sculptures that you have done over time? I do. I suppose because I get the reminders from from some people. Um, I, I've, I've obviously never repeated a sign. I'm always moving on to the next one. It's it's always a new story that that, that um, I have have to tell. I suppose the first ones have a kind of special place because that was so exciting to put in designs and have them accepted. Um, uh, but yeah, they're, they're all they're all a different challenge. They've all been great fun. I've visited places I would never have gone to otherwise. I've met people I wouldn't have met otherwise. Um, and uh, no, it's been it's been a great experience for me um, as, as an artist. It really has.